coming up, we are going to give you our best park picks of the Universal Orlando theme parks from our houses in and around Orlando, Florida. This is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 258 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co host, Rhino. Hello. Hey, Rhino, how are we doing this week? Uh, fine. <laughs> okay. I, I feel like um, I'm all right. I don't know. I mean, we're almost to summertime. You feeling fine. You know, I was actually surprised because yesterday was the weather was so nice out yesterday. And I was like, it is a shame that I am not out here more enjoying this because it was it's unheard of to have been in the 70s in like Florida in May. I feel like, right? I, I my, know. my dogs <laughs> agree with me right now. They do absolutely agree with you. I I also agree with you too. I the as of the day we're recording this, yesterday was my shopping day, so I spent all morning out running around to to the grocery store and uh, places trying to track down some cleaning materials and such. So I I was just like I was out and about all morning, but not actually enjoying the weather because I was inside. And then once I got home, I then went on an eight hour recording session that just kept going and going and going so uh by the time that i finally finished up with work i was like okay well i can uh i can walk outside and now it's dark so that there went my entire day on it so uh that was a little bit of a a bummer but uh you know what hey it's we're not here to talk about the weather we're here to talk about universal orlando i was gonna say speaking of your bum my butt hurts a lot like from sitting. I'm just going to be honest. My butt feels different. I don't know about you, but like I went for a run today and I was like my butt feels different. Like I just I don't know if I'm just sitting so much more. That's the problem. I, I try to get up and stand and walk, but you know. Yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride with that too cuz like I I'm one of those rare people in the this entire stay at home time. I've been losing weight i mean granted i am working out not not as much like i'll have a week where i actually am able to work out like every single day and then i'll go a week where i only get maybe one day in or just like a quick bike ride and that's it so uh, i like i'm actually losing weight through all of this stuff but the sitting is very obnoxious like i'm my chair is that i sit in for for all my recording and working it's just it's gone so i'm just like stacking pillows up at this point (laughs) to try to keep any level of comfort i am like in the only position i can sit in today because i threw my back and neck out last night while i was sleeping so uh you know it's uh sometimes things aren't so great well, yeah, it, it's it's one of those where I'm, I am I, I switch my chair every now and then, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I, I think yeah. the investment after this is standing desks because I would love one of those where I could sit or stand because it's like, I just want to stand, but I want to be like working still. Yeah. I am right there with you. And yeah, I just want to, I mean, I'm. I have been lucky enough that I've been able to go on lots of walks and such, but I'm ready. I'm ready to do more and I'm ready to do uh, do some of that in hopefully in, in theme parks in the next couple months, uh, specifically Universal and all the other ones. So, but we're still still no news as of the time that we are recording this on anything with Universal Orlando reopening. So, uh, I I, th- I was hoping that we would have heard already at some point. And hey, who knows? Maybe something comes out after we're done recording this. Uh, well, as we it, always that, say. I was going to say, that's our luck usually, right? It's just It feels yeah. like they just send out survey after survey right now. So they must be, something must be brewing, you know? Yeah, and I, I've heard things that that means that they they should be telling us very soon about when stuff is going to be reopening. The plans are, are getting solidified and stuff. So we hopefully will be hearing soon. But 
right now everything's just kind of a question like we know the surveys have been going out in terms of universal orlando like to pass holders and such asking them questions about about covid19 and in the theme parks reopening did you you took your survey on it right uh, no, I haven't done it yet, but I I was talking to Ken while he was doing his, so he basically was telling me everything it was saying because yeah because we were doing a we were uh, chatting yesterday, and so he was like, "This is crazy," and I saw the one about like the mask and stuff like that, and so it's it's like the scenarios they put out for oh, were so weird <laughs> that it was like like. I because I, I I was so confused. I thought one of the posts was a fake post, but I guess the 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 survey included being like. This is what your day would look like if you went to a mm-hmm. park and it cost this much to go to a park and you got to do this many things, but other people weren't allowed to go. Would you do it? And you're like, what? It's it's such a bizarre. It reminds me of like when you go to vote and you try to vote for like an amendment thing, but they always sneak in something else. So you have to be like, yes, I do want to have more strawberries, but no, I don't want more blueberries. And so... I don't yeah. know. It was one of those really confusing like things that one had nothing to do with the other sort of a question. Oh, like, yeah, it was it kind of like the the one that I know got passed around. I I started my survey. I did not finish it. Like it's most long. Universal Orlando surveys, they tell you it just takes 15 20 minutes and then like <laughs> 30 minutes later it's still asking me questions I'm like no i don't i don't have time for this so i started it didn't finish it but you know that's you, you mentioned the face mask ones they're asking like okay well which which would be uh which would be great for you would it be free face masks when you enter the park would it be face masks with characters on it that cost between four and six dollars would you bring your own from home or would you just not come at all if you don't have face masks uh there's stuff on there like that there's a one you kind of alluded to that was like how would you like to come to the park with all attractions open a vip lunch yeah uh special behind the scenes experiences but it's, it's double the price and your annual yeah, and your annual pass doesn't cover it would you say you are likely to come to the park <laughs> unlikely to come to the park and like, like just wild no <laughs> like you're basically going to give me some lunch somewhere and charge me another $110 for it like no thank yeah. you also i i will say though that pricing of the masks is really I I appreciated that. I w- I was assuming masks are gonna be like twenty bucks because that's the, it seems like the trend right now online is the second somebody comes up with a good design, they're like twenty dollars. And I'm like, I don't think Disney's even gonna sell them for this amount of money. Well, they, I also, also want to be clear. I like both strawberries and blueberries. And I, I just want to point out, like the ones that came on Shop Disney, that was twenty dollars oh, for a four pack. For so. four packs, yeah, those are yeah. decent. Yeah. Well, last night I was found one I I liked, and I was like, it was twenty dollars for one. And I was like, yeah, mm. a lot of the a lot of the people who are making their own and putting custom designs on it and stuff, if they're not doing it through T Public, if they're actually doing it themselves, they're charging a lot more on it, and yeah. that's that's the tough part. I have seen a couple where I was like, oh, maybe I would yeah. go in for that, but I'm still happy with my makeshift one. But the reason we're not getting more into like the survey and making it all about the survey in this episode is because this these literally are just surveys. This is them throwing. It's a expression Pete uses all the time, and uh, it's uh, it's them throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks. Throwing pasta against the wall and seeing what sticks. They just they want to have an idea of gauge of where the consumers are when they're ready to open back up on what they're going to be thinking of and what they can actually get away with in some cases and yeah. what they need to provide. So it's not it's not worth like. You know, other people. I'm not pointing out anyone specific. I don't even think I've seen anyone do it. But it would it could be very easy for people to be putting out articles and videos right now saying Universal's going to charge yeah. double to get into the parks when it reopens. We just don't have that information yet. And well, how much ho- ever comes? Up, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you know what it's like. We get emailed the surveys. There's a million survey people in the park, and it's it's it is because they're trying to fine tune an experience. But it's like. How often how often does stuff come out of that? You know what I mean? They take so many surveys and uh, oftentimes they'll be out of every 10 surveys there might be like one thing that pops out of it, you know. Yeah. I agree completely on it. So, but I I do uh I, I do have hope that we will get some news soon. Um that's just from from what I'm hearing with it and then there's like other little things I 
I was on or I was on Twitter and someone said to me like, Oh, Hey, all of the, all of the restaurants at like the Lowe's hotels and such that obviously aren't owned and operated by universal. They're operated by Lowe's and then the restaurants they choose to have in there. Uh, like they're all popping up on open table for reservations starting on May 22nd. But Mm. apparently I missed this completely at some point in it. Uh, I was talking to a friend and at one point, apparently reservations opened up for places in city walk and then they pulled them back off and, and things have fluctuated with open table in terms of reservations and such. So even with something like that, like there's a chance that right now anyone could get on open table and make a reservation for any of the hotel restaurants uh, that that have open table reservations available. They can make them starting on May 22nd. And technically, if it opens up and they're able to go in, they, they have that ability to. So uh, that's if that ends up sticking, that's a that's a promising sign for things to come. But again, restaurants restaurants are working under certain restrictions right now in the state of Florida. Twenty five percent capacity inside mm-hmm. uh, outdoor seating has to have at least that six feet of distance so yeah technically if the staff is there these could open up on may 22nd when you can make the reservations for them but at the same time i haven't been tracking any of like the reservations and stuff so i don't know if it's like disney with with their with their system like you know they'll show park hours up to like a certain date however many days out and then once it gets to the point they're comfortable then they cancel them out of there i'm not sure this same thing doesn't happen with like dining reservations that they're not going to say like a week from now like okay it's not going to open up yet so we're going to pull it off open table and just cancel on people but it's all stuff that we're keeping our eyes on right now and hopefully hopefully very soon we have some good news for you with uh with stuff reopening obviously it's going to be restaurants maybe at the hotels and definitely city walk first but uh well we'll just have to we'll have to wait and see heck We'll probably end up making a video announcing it's reopening when it actually happens instead of just waiting to be in one of these shows. So that is, uh, I think, all there is to say about that. So now we have a fun little uh, episode for you here. Uh, and this is inspired by the Best and Worst of Walt Disney World episode that we put out recently this past week where we kind of talked about our park picks. And uh, the the premise of that was we took We took uh, saying that once this all reopens, what's three attractions, a restaurant, a snack that you want to get as soon as as everything reopens. So we're going to do that with Universal and it works out perfectly. We're excluding Volcano Bay, but we're going to do that with Universal here because it works out perfectly with just Rhino and I. We're able to do this where we each are taking a theme park Mm -hmm. and we'll pick three attractions that we're most excited for and we'll tell you why. And then we're going to choose one restaurant, quick service or sit down. Doesn't have to be one or the other. Either is fine. Uh, different budgets for different people. Uh, we're going to choose one snack. Snacks are delicious, so mm-hmm. have to include those in some way. And then we're also going to venture into City Walk. We're going to choose a restaurant in City Walk that we want to. We already know Rhinos, so no surprises there. And then we are going to tell you which hotel. If we were doing this Wait, as a did true I say vacation. Mine? No, we just always know. Oh, it's, okay. It's, <laughs> we, we can read you like a book, Rhino. <laughs> But yeah, then we're going to choose a hotel that it's, hey, when we go back and we're having this very short experience here, if we could stay at one of the hotels, which one would it be? And so that is that is how we are going to do this. So uh, we before this all started, Rhino and I played a rousing game of rock, paper, scissors, mm. uh, something I'm glad we didn't try to do on the air because you don't know <laughs> how so hard it is yeah. to uh, do a video call and try to do rock, paper, scissors. It does not work well, especially if there's a you could claim a slight delay, but just be cheating. Yeah, well, I I don't know how you were seeing it on your end. I was seeing my answers first, and then I was seeing yours. Oh, it was the same for me. So I like would throw my hand out and be like, "Oh no, I went too quick." (laughs) Yeah, no. So I was like, "By the that's why I ended up winning, and uh, I won." We ended up having to go four rounds for the best out of three, and I won two out of uh, two out of the four. Rhino won one, but each time I was like. 
oh no, he's seeing what I'm doing because he wants <laughs> me to choose which park I want to do. But I'm glad we cleared that up now to everyone's excitement here. But ultimately, I won. So I chose that I was going to talk about Islands of Adventure for this. So I'm going to go second because clearly Islands of Adventure was the second park to open up in the grand scheme of Universal's history. So Rhino is going to be first forced to go first when luckily he knows the format because we did this on his show Mm -hmm. so rhino why don't you take it away and tell us about your universal studios florida adventure okay so we're talking attractions first here all Mm -hmm. right so i think that i would love to visit brendan frazier um over at the the mummy and take a little spin on that if they want to social distance me away from everybody else that would be great and (laughs) Um, I, I, yeah, I think that would be fun. Um, I'd also obviously need to go into Diagon Alley and, uh, get a little bit of that Harry Potter magic. And I think I would, while I'm there, go on, uh, Escape from Gringotts. Mm-hmm. Um, another one, just, just thinking what it feels like to do one of these guys come up at that extreme angle, uh, while a Bellatrix is screaming, uh, weird stuffy, which she's trying to <laughs> slap you with her wand. It was you, wasn't it? I can never, I can never remember what she says, but I can, I can remember the sound of how she says it. You know? Oh yeah, I don't think I've ever understood how she says it because she, she has she that like, like pause in between. How did that? You're like, well, what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> You're like, oh, they let us go. There's no time to even think about it. But um, we don't, we don't really talk about it that much. But Gringotts doesn't make you sick. Um, no, it, it. it, it you know what part almost does is is the trolls because mm. um, you kind of slow down and there's that just slight disconnect when the trolls go to like spin the car yeah it, it'll it can sometimes do it so but I think because I've I've done it enough now that I kind of know the motion of the car so I know if I'm not feeling well how to kind of move myself enough that I will be okay got it I I, I did think about that too where I'm like oh do I, I'm taking a risk going on one of these ones that is has a potential to make me feel a little nauseous so yeah um but uh yeah i I think it's always it's always worth it for me because i do like the uh i like the dragon pull at the end and stuff and yeah um i I do like the drop the hold drop like where they hold you up and then they drop you down i I wish there was more of that i mean those are i think the two best parts of that attraction are the the opening sequence where you're you're held up before you drop down and then that final one after after you don't have to worry about Voldemort ever, anymore, and you do your shoot off and go up to meet Bill Weasley. Like those are, it's the two best parts of that entire attraction. After all, it's the safest place in the world. <laughs> Whatever. <And you're> like, <laughs> um, I, I I for some reason also like when the little goblin, they're goblins, right? Who run the uh, bank? Yeah. Okay, I'm having like a something's wrong right now with me. Um, where he is like, get in the vault. Over there, when he like oh, yells yeah. and you kind of do that running around the corner. twist, yeah, because yeah, you don't like spin in a circle, but you move. I, I didn't realize this for too long. Like I don't know why my brain just didn't put it together that you're going into the vault, like you're turning and going in backwards. Yeah. So I didn't. I never put that together. That like, oh, that's the door to the vault, and then this is us behind the door. Like so, I that's a newer revelation for me so i'm kind of like i always like that one part for some stupid reason but um and i'll th- i think i'd uh i think i'd need to go hang out in uh with botanicus in the forest at et yeah yeah no that's and i not even need an explanation on that it's a classic easygoing ride especially when your other two are uh pumping the adrenaline yeah, yeah. you kind of need a i miss a little the smell bit of, of the forest i do miss the smell of the forest too i it's i mm don't think you can ever say that there's too many rides on et there's there's just not enough et yeah. deserves all the love and praise that it gets we've said it before if they move out all the queue and they want to do like a dinner party in there or some sort of experience mm-hmm. like that in the time of that we're in now if they're looking for new ways to make money boom right there make a some sort of exclusive dinner party evening where it's like a max 10 people and you know you've got your tables are all really spaced out in there Give me an E.T. themed dinner in there, and I am all about it. It can have, like, Reese's Pieces themed dessert. It can be... Uh, I'm trying to think of stuff that doesn't look like E.T., so it's not like you're eating him. <laughs> but, you know, um, a pizza? Because they order a pizza. Yeah. Who said you guys could order a pizza? Um, milk? 
spilt milk, you know? There's so many foods to choose from in this. Um, and then beer, because E.T. gets drunk. Oh, so, yes, he does. You know? Yes, he does. No, I, I think I've told this before on this show, too, that when I applied and got, finally got accepted to work at Universal, and they asked me where I wanted to work, I said, uh... Well, I've always heard that the the queue of E.T. smells really good. So I I guess E.T. Adventure. And they literally laughed at me and they said, no, no, no. With your work experience, uh, we're going to give you two options. You can work at Rip Ride Rocket or Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. (laughs) Harry Potter. Yeah, a million times. Yeah, they're like, if you worked at Test Track at Disney and you kept up with that pace, you're going to work at one of those two attractions, not at E.T. Adventure. I was like, okay, well. Harry Potter. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> yeah. Uh went went that way. So I'm all on board on ET, but you you had some hard choices there because we kind of talked about it off air before we got started. It's I I think those are the three standout attractions when it comes to Universal Studios Florida. Yeah. Beyond that, there's good stuff like Transformers is fun. I was going to say Transformers is fun and I, you know, if I can only go to the one park, it's kind of like you know, I definitely prefer Spider-Man over Transformers, but yeah. I'm I'm also like, if somebody's like, let's go on Transformers, I'm not going to be like, nah, I'd, yeah. I'd do it, you know? It's a not good sure one. I would want to touch the guns at Men in Black right now. No. I, oh, I, before all this anyways, it is one of those type of attractions where you're just, you know, we're all sweaty in Florida, so I'm not yeah. judging anybody. Like, the seat, I always think of, there's the specific feeling when your arm rests on something or when you've touched something, you know, and it... It, it it's like I can still feel what that feels like and I know that's human sweat that has been there for a while so yeah well um, and if you've been watching our last series we just did the best and worst and the rest of the change that at Universal Studios Florida attractions and you know that we don't uh, think too kindly of stuff like Fast and Furious Supercharged and Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon so you had it. Uh, you had it exceptionally tough. It, easy choices with the three you made, but tough. Uh, Listen, really, in general, if it's uh, uh, we, we also didn't specify the time of the year. We're saying if it's opening right now in the month of May, because if it was later in this year, I'd be like, you can keep everything, and I'll just wait for <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights. So, yeah, well, that would definitely help once we got to like the snacks too, because you'd be able to choose pizza fries. So, mm, pizza uh, fries, I miss you so. I know you do, but what is, speaking of that, what is your your one restaurant choice and your your one snack choice? What do you what are you choosing for those? Okay, so I'm I'm going to tell you my snack first because I have been like craving it in in this time of like quarantine, and it's just one of those things that I, it, I it's ice cream. It's the ice cream. It's the it's the a uh, flourishing um, Florian flourish, Ford excuse. Yeah, yeah, I can never say it right. <laughs> Florian Ford excuse. Um, it's one of those words when I would read the book, I just read it, but I would. There wouldn't be a real word in my head. I'd be like, this and this. And. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that place. Um, but I, I just, I miss like, uh, I just, I want, I, I, I usually do get the hard packed ice cream, um, but there's just, it's so good. And I've said this before that I do think that is the best ice cream that you can get in like Florida. And it's, it's so good. I would get two flavors. I'd get that, um, the blondie. Um and the I like the apple crumble. Yeah, I uh, I I love Florian Fortescue. We've talked about it a lot on there. I think it's because it's extravagant flavors, but mm-hmm. not like too crazy. But it's also then not overdone. Like there there is a lot of good ice cream like in Orlando, even in the theme parks and such. Like I I know people love like Ample Hills, but over yeah. at Walt Disney World. But for me, like that's almost, they almost go too far with some of their creations and make it too indulgent. I think uh, it, I think Florian Fortescue's hits the perfect level of indulgence with the, the flavors and combinations that, that they came up with for that place. And I mean, granted, you have the books to kind of get inspiration from, but I, I truly, truly enjoy it. Yeah, plus I feel like when you go to a theme park and you, I there's just something about getting ice cream outside of my house too, you know what I mean? Like I I do love to have a, a refrigerator with or a freezer with some ice cream in it, but there's just something like when you go to get it from an ice cream stand or an ice cream place, it's just like that right amount of melty. Like yep. it's soft, it's like it hasn't been it hasn't been freezer burn or anything yet like that and it's just mm-hmm. it's it's just the right consistency and I love that. 
I mm. agree with that. So what's your restaurant? This is tough, actually, because I I like both, like, I like the Simpsons area, like, I like Springfield, but also I have, I, I have the great uh, Leaky Cauldron over here, and I think I would actually lean toward Leaky Cauldron, okay, because I feel like at Leaky Cauldron, I've got some stuff that I can't have at my house, like, I could go get a scotch egg, mm-hmm. um, and I could get uh, some of the Aussie f- otter fizzing, um, orange juice that they do Mm -hmm. over there it's like the cinnamon sugar rim on this like bubbly orange juice and um you know just there's a there's i like the variety of the choices they have there and so i think that's where i would go to i know there's a lot of harry potter choices in here but i love harry potter and it's and you're allowed to it's some of the best stuff so it's hard to not not argue with it and uh I, i think they're excellent choices you you well thought out and well decided on. But uh, so why don't you tell everyone right now why you are so excited to get back to NBC Sports Grill and Brew? <laughs> I was going to say NBC Sports Grill. <laughs> and I was like, I, I hope he's not expecting me to say twosome because I'm also close on that. But um, uh, well, it's just I think because. I'm just like, you know, you. we've been all creative while we're in this time and making food at our house. But there's just something that's just very neighborhood feeling about going to NBC Sports Bar. You know, it's like the food is food that you're familiar with, but I've always said it before. It's like elevated bar food. And I just, I I, I can imagine getting like their California, like that turkey burger they do or, or something and like some tots and getting to choose one of their massive beer selections that they have there too. I would love to be, you know, have one or two while we're sitting and, and chatting and, and it's like I just I really their their food has always been very consistent for me too. So I always I always enjoy it. And there just it's like there's enough options that it's the type of place where like yes I do want to get the same thing I have, but there's so many other things to try. Uh, yeah, it would definitely be NBC. Okay. And where would where would you be shacking up at for this? Um, I think I would like to go to. Um, to the one uh, it, well i still have i really have don't have a lot of experience staying in the resorts but i think i'd like to m- make it you know if i'm just going all out and we're like we're, we're i'm back universal's back i'm gonna go to um cabana bay i think hmm. i think i'm going over there because i just I, I feel like it feels it feels bright it feels uh you know fun like you, you've got the cool looking pool i'd like to you know that aesthetic right now would be nice to hop around you know it's a nice um a, a, a nice contrast to sort of like the aesthetic of City Walk versus the aesthetic of Universal. So it makes like three nice like journeys that you can take. Yeah. Very true. Very true. A, a very good choice. I'm not choosing that one for mine. I'll just explain it now. The reason why is I f- I'm thinking about that property. It's very, to me, it's very homely. I think that's why I do love it, mm. even though my home is not designed. Uh, like mid-century modern it's not 50s 60s uh all over the place here but i feel like the the i the idea that it gives me when i'm at cabana bay is that i am at home and uh, after being sequestered to our homes for so long that's the last thing i want and then like with the food at their their food court like it's a lot of the same stuff i've been cooking over and over again that i just i need a break from (laughs) My caveat, my caveat with that is that what I like about it is that I can, you know, stay in there, hop out, and go to like Bar Seventeen to get some nice aerial views and some bow, and then I can also hop into um, uh, Sapphire Falls and go to Strongwater as well. So you oh. get like a little nestle of the three. What I feel like are some nice three offerings right there. No, there, those aren't open for you. You chose Cabana. Oh, Bay. I cho- you're not allowed for. on another yeah. hotel property. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you just you like uh, would that change? I wasted your, my choice. <laughs> no, would you switch to I would Sapphire switch. Falls or Aventura? Um, you know, I I thought about because right before this all happened, I went on that tour of the new property, which I know yeah. is very is is on the uh, the the um what what's it called? What's the category? The value category. Value value. And you're category. talking about Dockside Inn and Suites. Yeah, Dockside Inn and Suites. Um, you know, I might actually switch to Sapphire. If that was the case, because it, it limits me on the sit down restaurant, but I do really enjoy those appetizers at Strong Water, all the uh, the tapas, and mm-hmm. I do like those drinks over there, and I like the smell of Sapphire Falls too. 
It's a very distinct smell when you walk in that lobby, and it's it's like this tropical thing that I I, I just like I like the giant lobby. How strange. <laughs> But those are great, great choices all around. And I'm going to try to stay very different. Obviously, in my theme park, I'm going to stay different. But I also am in my hotel choice as well as as my city walk choice. And so let me jump into the theme parks. Of course, I am taking Islands of Adventure. And without a doubt, the first thing I am going on when this all reopens, uh, without a hint in my mind, is Hagrid's Magical Creatures oh, Motorbike yes. Adventure. Yes, yes. Uh, I, that, I have missed that roller coaster so much. I feel like I didn't get enough of it before all of this happened, even though it's been open for... For a decent amount of time now, it's just with with weather delays, with technical issues with that attraction. I feel like it has not gotten its its it it's hasn't heyday. Gotten, yeah, it hasn't even hit like its its potential yet. And hopefully, hopefully, they are uh, addressing that in this current time period. Uh, you know, because part of the reasons why they're saying, okay, we can't bring it up today or it can't come up at all is they needed time to actually work on the attraction and get it working how it needs to be. And this is a perfect, as long as workers were able to be in their social distancing, hopefully they were able to get some of that taken care of. So, so it's working much better once we're on the other side of all of this, but just it's a good, it's a good attraction to practice social distancing on too, because you're just two by two, which is nice. Exactly. It's uh, it's not even that bad. And uh, you know what? Space them out every other every other car yeah. if you really motorcycle have to. sidecar <laughs> motorcycle sidecar motorcycle sidecar. Yeah, there you like, go. That's front to back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, see, I think the thing they're going to face is people getting off and being able to to disinfect it. It's it's crazy too because I was literally thinking about this earlier today. If everybody, as they were walking on to get on, was like psh, hands had to sanitize themselves as they went in it would make the disinfecting process on the other side a little bit easier i think too yeah. as they got out because that's that attraction right doesn't it have to be like unloaded and loaded in a certain amount of time it, it does uh the belts can slow down so that is the one nice part of it is that as it's pulling into the station you know when when it first opened and like when when i went on the media day for it they had barely just gotten the ride really running well so the belt was moving i oh gosh i would have to go back and watch the shows when i was talking about it i want to say it was it was definitely not moving it any faster than half speed of what it had the potential to do because they still didn't know how quickly they could get mm. people onto it so that's the great thing about these belt attractions like this uh hagrid's does have options with it but i mean this is this roller coaster is just so amazing having that wind running through your hair nothing mm. to me there's not a lot there's you have that maybe like jurassic park river adventure and the incredible hulk where you can really get the wind moving through your hair and feel like this freedom is, I'm yeah I'm at an attraction I'm in a theme park right now, and uh, so that's why I have to choose Hagrid's. Uh, of course, then Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, my mm-hmm. number one love at Islands of Adventure. Despite the fact of how much I just uh, <laughs> gushed over Hagrid's, it's my first and my first true love for Islands of Adventures was and will always be uh, Harry Potter in the Forbidden Journey, and because more than anything, it is I, I spent. Since Dragon Challenge is gone, that's the only last remnant of my working at Universal. So anytime I would go back to that attraction after I was done working there, it, you know, it, it felt like I was coming back home, which is kind of it's also hilarious in the same right that all these people travel there throughout the entire world because they grew up reading the Harry Potter books and movies. So even though they may have never stepped in Hogwarts at the theme parks before, just because of how much they let the world of Harry Potter into their lives, it was like they were going home for the first time getting yeah. to go to the castle. So for me, it works on both of those levels. And so I just, I couldn't imagine not going there in experiencing Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and and really getting my Potter fix out of it. And mm-hmm. uh, if you know, my first love of Universal, uh, or of Islands of Adventure is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, then you know that my second love is the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. And, I was going to say, I hope it's Spider-Man. 
I thought really long and hard about Jurassic Park River Adventure because I love that too. But yeah. it's it has to be it has to be Spider Man. Uh, it's just it, it's a that those three attractions that I chose: Spider Man, Forbidden Journey, and Hagrid's. It's just a one, two, three knockout punch. And yeah. then when you throw in other attractions in that park, like like River Adventure, like the incredible Hulk coaster, even though it's not my favorite, like the two water attractions, Popeye and Bluto's plus Dudley do rights. I mean, there's just, there is so much good to choose from. And I'll even throw in high in the sky. Seuss trolley. I was, ride. I was actually thinking about that. Cause when we, you said we were going to do this, I was like, I was, I, I forgot. I don't know why I forgot, but I was just like, Oh yeah, Harry Potter. And then I was like, okay. And I was like, do I want to go on the Seuss trolley just to get like the grand view of it all right now? Yeah. I thought about that too, but it's just the three best I had to I had to go with them. And then if I could choose the last three, it would definitely be River Adventure Hulk and High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride. But listen, the three you picked are the reason why you go to a theme park. These are the type of experiences that you have at a theme park like this. You know what I mean? They're, they they are the attractions that are unique that separates you know, puts Universal above the others. You know, yep. in terms of, of in terms of uh, more local or regional theme parks. So I hate I hate when people say stuff like that. Like when they'll be like, "Oh, Universal's it's kind of similar to like uh, uh this or that." And I'm like, "No, it's no. not. No. Get your head it's, out of your butt." It's absolutely not. I can you know you can say that like I'm not I'm not even going to get into that. I'm going to move into my restaurant and my yes, snack tell me. choices. This is tough. This was a tough one because I don't. I don't necessarily love a lot of dining at Islands of Adventure. Mm. I I'm not wild about I'm I'm truly not <laughs> wild about anything. I know where you'd go. What was that place we got where we got the cigarette chicken? <laughs> where we were like you were like it just tastes like cigarettes. <laughs> It was in the tune area and it was like the Chinese oh, food we had gotten um, and yeah, because it uh, was like burned or something cafe. yeah <laughs> comic strip cafe yeah it's well that's a hilarious part of all the dining reviews we've done like with islands of adventure i feel like it's always it was either terrible or it wasn't as bad as it could <laughs> yeah. be uh whether it's blondie's comic Blondie, strip yeah. cafe uh all all of them uh did we end up doing did we do Circus McCurkus? I can't even remember. No, I, no, because no. we d- we did the Grinch, um, the Grinch breakfast there, right? right. Yeah, yeah and I, I liked the we liked that. I think, but um, yeah, I but, yeah, I don't know what you choose. I think I know where you're going to choose, but well, I'm I'm going with one that doesn't really. I, I don't. I wouldn't say would stand out to many people, but um, I I'm actually I don't hate Confisco's as a restaurant. Oh. I don't think it's that bad. So. It, uh, you know, it's uh, to me, I've had more meals that I've enjoyed at Confisco's rather than Mythos. And so, yeah, I think I, I would probably lean towards that. Otherwise, you're looking at quick service throughout the rest of the park. And, you know, again, there's you can have a good meal at a quick service in Islands of Adventure, but you have to you inevitably have to choose like the right item in there in order to have a good meal it's i also not, not not to like knock it i feel like they a lot of the quick service places there have a lot of very basic options so it's, it's a lot of like you can get chicken or you know some sort of fry or something so it's not there's not a ton of as adventurous choices i yeah. feel like in the adventure park which is ironic but yeah, well, and that's that's it. We're like Comic Strip Cafe is just this big question mark because of all the bizarre choices that they have there with mixing. Let's mix uh, Chinese food with then burgers yeah. and fries mixed with this and that. So, like, that's a weird one. But, you know, like, you have Italian at Marvel Superhero Island, and then you also have the Italian over in Circus McGurkis. And then for Burger Digs in Jurassic Park, you then have burgers at, like, three other places. And then you have Thunder Falls Terrace in Jurassic Park. But that's very similar to what you get over at uh, um, the... The uh, three broomsticks in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, minus I think the uh, the fish and chips. So it's like, and then the the shepherd's pie. So it's all like it's just everything is kind of mashed up, except for 
except for really like mm-hmm. the lost continent having like the kebabs and yeah then the the euros and the one at the one stand that's like the only unique ones and uh so yeah i'm just gonna go with confiscos because i like that better than mythos but for the snack without a doubt i am getting some sort of snack at green eggs and ham because uh assuming uh, i have to assume oh yeah it reopens with everything because one of the the universal recipes to do at home they posted was from green eggs and ham so i think they're they're sticking strong with it and it will remain open on the other side of all of this. So I don't know which one I would do necessarily. I don't know if I'd go green eggs and ham or if I'd, I'd get mm-hmm. my who hash or even, even try the, uh, the, the pizza tots. Like, I don't know which one I would do exactly, but I would choose, I would definitely be ordering something from there except for mm. the s'mores i will not be having the s'mores there uh <laughs> um, but blew away would, in the wind <laughs> yeah I, as as far as the the that goes i'd say i would just go uh i'd go oh i i did like that who hash can i'd probably go who hash that'd be my stack you yeah know, nothing better than an 1800 calorie snack i, I thought about trying to make the who hash again while i was here because i was like well we got an air fryer so if we just get regular tots we can make them nice and crispy and maybe I can find some sort of alternative to the cheese or something. I don't know, but hey, you make your own cheese sauce. Do a little butter, a little a uh, little flour. You know, just make your own roux and then dump a pile of cheese in there, just like a can of cheese. <laughs> yeah, get, get some canned corned beef and mm. slice and dice it up and cook it. And yeah, there you go. Gosh, I'm Burn so some hungry. Scallions. It's all done. Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm ready for dinner too. So uh, we'll move this along with that. And so those are my choices there. As far as City Walk. The one thing I have missed through all of this, something that I don't eat very often, but every now and then it'll be a nice treat for Kylie and I, I enjoy a good donut. And Mm. I have not had any donuts, I think, since this all... That's a lie. I had one donuts. uh, One of the the blueberry farms out by our way, they do uh, blueberry donuts. So when we went to do a drive through pickup for blueberry beer and blueberries, we also got a six-pack of donuts. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And, I almost messaged you today because there's a local uh, bakery that's near Pete's house that we every now and then we would st- I'd swing in and like get us a donut yeah. or two, and they posted a picture today and they had a Dunkaroos one and they had another <sighs> one and I was like it was like Dunkaroos there was an Oreo one uh, and I was just like sweet. Sweet baby Jesus, I want to go here so bad right now. And I, it's funny that you said that because that's where I'm like, donuts are where it's at. It was Twix, caramelized banana, Samoa cookie, vanilla Oreo, chocolate Oreo cheesecake, and Dunkaroo. And I was like, oh. do I risk it and go? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, I, that it, is that <laughs> is the answer to that question. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I want a donut so bad. So I would be hitting up Voodoo Donuts. Give me yeah. a Give me some milk. Give me a. Give me some donuts. I, I don't even care which one. They're they're my least favorite donut. There right now would still be better than no donuts at all. And I, you know, I granted you do get this body that I have <laughs> eating lots of beer. Wait, eating donuts and drinking lots of beer. But I still I don't indulge in donuts that often just because of how unhealthy they are for you. But oh, I could. I could really go for for a donut right now. And then for my resort, I would actually surprisingly choose the Hard Rock Hotel. Not not because of anything else, but because of my specifications where I said that you could only use the amenities you have there yeah. in order to uh, you know, to to eat and relax at. I like their pool area. I don't think it's that bad. Um in you know, decent pool bar and such nice relaxing atmosphere. But, uh, one of the hardest things for me to personally find in all of this has been steak. And so I am not that the grocery store doesn't have steak, but the cuts I've been getting when I've, I've been able to get some are not good. And so I would love to, to be able to go to the palm and have a ridiculously amazing steak cooked very medium rare and uh pile that down with a bunch of manhattans and and some delicious wine and then be able to crawl back up to my bedroom at the at the end of the night and i cannot think of something i would enjoy more than that and then hey once you get up in the room minimalist design very pink i, d- I do like the rooms. very relaxing oh it's, and it's pink you love aesthetic. aerosmith you love aerosmith so it was right love there. at first sight yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> gets me high as a kite. <laughs> I see what you're doing. When I think everything is going supreme, I okay, yeah, that's that was one of my favorite music videos that I'd watch when I was getting ready for school as a lad growing up watching VH1. So those are my choices. You heard Rhinos right before. Lots of fun uh, decisions being made there. So uh, now, now it's your turn to get in on that fun. If you're watching this on YouTube, of course, in those comments below, let us know what your picks would be. Uh, give us, give us. You can do both parks since you're out there. Choose, choose three attractions in each park, and let us know. Choose the restaurants. Choose a City Walk restaurant. Choose a hotel. Let us know what you would be excited for when when you get to go back to Universal after this is all said and done. And if you're if you're watching this, or sorry, if you're watching this, you have YouTube. If you're listening to us, uh, you know just. Find our YouTube video for it and go and leave the comments. You don't have to watch the video. Just jump in on the action there. So uh, it's very easy to uh, do so. I'm, I'm really interested in what you have to say. And while you're there, you can always leave us questions because I think we're about due for a question and answer episode. Yeah. I've been hinting at that for the past couple of weeks. So just just do it. Just do it. So, hey, Rhino, thanks for mm-hmm. having this conversation. I'm so hungry right now. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Like I want to go learn how to make a donut. I want to go do. I want to make tots. It's like uh, donuts, tots, and you know what I really want? A chocolate Manhattan, like from Toothsome. Like, mm. yeah. and now my stomach is like growling. I will say the the hardest part right now is finding active yeast for yeast donuts. So if you can make cake donuts, which they seem pretty easy to make, if you're making like a basic one or like a sour cream one, it's pretty pretty straightforward. But for yeast donuts, you have to have active yeast, and I don't. So, I I don't no know dice. if we finally got some. I'm gonna have to check now. I'm gonna have to check. Yeah. We'll update you on the donut situation next show. We, yeah, exactly, <laughs> we will do that. So, thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. If you need extra information, disunplug.com. That's the home of the show notes page for this show and all the others on the Disunplug podcast network. You can get any information you need there, including links to our social media channels and other ways to contact us. And then if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, make sure you're subscribed if possible and leaving us feedbacks, ratings, feedback, ratings, and reviews when possible. And again, if you're watching this on iTunes or uh, just paying attention to it in the background of iTunes, leave us questions, comments down below, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to us if you haven't yet and uh, hit that bell button so you get notified when we have new Universal videos plus all the other ones we do on Disney and beyond. So thank you again, everyone out there. Thank you, Rhino. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name. (laughs) 